Burma coup resistance notes November 3, 2022. More than half a million children are homeless in Burma due to the coup, according to Save the Children. This is out of a total post-coup refugee population of 1.6 million calculated by the UN High Commission for Refugees. Ethnic regions in Mourne State, a local PDF twice ambushed a junta foot column two days ago November 1 between Yi and Thanbuzayat, killing nine troops and wounding five. In Duplaya district of Korthulate Mayawadi Township on Burmese maps, junta troops tried to infiltrate the Shuinyangpin area, and Karen Army Cobra Battalion snipers picked off two of them. In northern Shan State, a PDF attacked the junta municipal admin offices in Lashio Town with grenades yesterday, wounding two troops. Also in Lashio Township, the Kokang Ethnic Army MNDAA, fought with junta troops yesterday at Weiwan Village. Attacks in this part of Shan State have been rare. The Arakan Army says it blew up and destroyed a junta food supply truck yesterday in Mongdo Township of Arakan State, killing three troops and injuring others. The AA also fought a battle against junta troops in Palatwa Township of Southern Chin State yesterday, but results aren't given. The Kachin Army says the junta used chemical weapons against Kachin forces on October 24 at Longja Mountain, where a siege is still ongoing. Jets dropped gas bombs that rendered soldiers ill and incapacitated. Junta Army Desertions A junta policeman left his barracks in Palam, Chin State today and joined the Chin Defense Forces. He says he has been prevented from doing it earlier because the junta holds their families hostage. Junta Scorched Earth Village Terrorism Campaign In Pound Township of Bago Region troops attacked a refugee camp of about 300 people on October 29, burning tents and destroying what little people had to live with. Then on October 31 they burned part of Liechpen village, and the next day they tortured a 52-year-old refugee and then murdered him along with a PDF leader and soldier, and destroyed livestock. Troops attacked Sandorthakone village in Kaulan township of Zagaring region yesterday, firing mortars that blew up and killed a couple in their 50s. The troops looted homes, stealing jewelry, phones, computers, fabric, and other valuables. A report in the Irrawaddy says progress is going backwards in some parts of central Zagaring region, where the regime is coercing villagers to join its Pai Sorhiti militias while PDF influence is underdeveloped by weak local national unity government officials. The Pai Sorhiti's only function is to attack civilian villages, they are terrorists, in other words. They extort money from villages using threats, kidnap civilians for ransom, Go on raids with junta troops where they drive people from their villages, loot valuables from homes, then burn down the communities. They are also killers. Entire villages where support for the junta is strong have been turned into Pai Sorhiti camps, while many other villages around them have been depopulated and destroyed, their residents living as refugees. Junta troops burned homes around the Nartaik police barracks in Mandalay region on November 1, in retaliation for a fatal PDF attack on the barracks on October 29. In Tants Township, 200 troops looted and burned homes in Gay 8 village two days ago November 1. This was the second attack on Gay 8. People's Defense Forces PDFs. In Zagaring region, the son of a Pai Sorhiti terrorist leader in Ayador Township was killed by a landmine while attacking civilians two days ago November 1. His funeral was held today in the Pai Sorhiti camp. During the procession, a local PDF dropped a bomb from a drone into the procession. The PDF claims it killed 15 of the terrorists and wounded 20, but all that is clear from the drone video is that there were some casualties and everyone else ran away in all directions. A PDF blew up a junta foot patrol yesterday in Mayanmu Township, killing five troops out of a force of 60. In Shwebo Township, a PDF coalition fired mortars at junta troops for an hour, killing five of them. Also in Shwebo Township, three junta mine-clearing vehicles went out with radio signal jammers to prevent PDFs from detonating bombs remotely. The vehicles were attacked and some troops were killed, but the number isn't reported. In Kyabmyang Township a PDF blew up a junta foot patrol twice on November 1 and killed four troops. In Kani Township, a large PDF coalition attacked a junta Pai Sorhiti terrorist camp this morning for 90 minutes, then withdrew unharmed. They don't know what casualties they caused inside the terrorist camp. In Mandalay region, 
A PDF assassinated a local junta administrator in Inwatogi Township who was blamed for providing intelligence to the regime on local resistance activities. Also in Inwatogi, a PDF drone bombed a police barracks yesterday, killing a junta policeman and wounding another. Urban warfare. In Yangon, bombs exploded in Thakata, Mingaladan, and Tamwe townships last night. In Mandalay, junta troops raided and closed a Christian orphanage in Payagidagan Township last night, accusing it of supporting PDFs. Troops pulled children from their beds in the night and threw them out on the street. Civil Disobedience Movement CDM. Overseas Burma citizens in Singapore have raised over US$100,000 for the revolutionary forces back home since August. Meanwhile, a screening of the Burma Revolution documentary film, The Road Less Taken, is being held in Texas, USA, with tickets sold for $25 to $50 each, the money also to support the Spring Revolution. Australian, Singaporean, and Norwegian banks are still doing business with junta crony banks that directly support the illegal military regime in Burma and its humanitarian atrocities. The governments of those countries have so far refused to impose banking sanctions on the junta. International organizations such as Justice for Myanmar are urging those governments and the banks themselves to stop financing the campaign of terror underway in Burma since February 1, 2021. A Burmese arms and drug dealer, Tun Min Lat, was arrested in Thailand in September, and now the Thai government has seized US$50 million United States dollars of his assets in Thailand. Tun Min Lat supplied weapons to the junta, while also trafficking illegal drugs from Burma to the outside world. He is a close friend of junta dictator Min Ong Lang.